This is Dr. Ravindra Reddy. I will deal with the anthropology for civil services. I have been teaching for anthropology for civil services for the past seven years. In today's class, we will discuss about uh, the anthropology syllabus and uh, the question paper pattern and uh, the pros and cons of uh, anthropology as an optional for civil services. First we will discuss uh, what is meant by anthropology and what are the different components of anthropology. After that uh, we will go into details. Before going into the syllabus, first let us discuss uh, what is the meaning of anthropology. At this point of time for your easy understanding, we can consider anthropology as uh, the study of evolution of man along with the study of evolution of culture. That means the study of evolution of man and his culture is called anthropology. And as far as our civil services is concerned, like that of other optionals, in anthropology there will be two papers. One is uh, paper 1. And another one is paper 2. Paper 1 will be in general, whereas paper 2 will be in the context of India. That's why paper 1 can be considered as general anthropology, whereas paper 2 can be considered as Indian anthropology. As far as the general anthropology is considered, again it can be divided into two components. One can be called as section A and another can be called as section B or part A part B. In section A, we will study the evolution of man and sorry, evolution of man and evolution of culture after that we will study what is meant by culture and what are the different domains of the culture marriage is part and parcel of our culture we have different varieties of marriage practices and different varieties of family systems joint family systems, nuclear family systems and similarly political systems also. The political systems are devised based on the cultural sentiments of the people. Even though we have different varieties of uh, political systems, even though we have adopted different values uh, for, at the time of uh, enacting constitution, we are casting our votes uh, on the basis of our culture. Whenever there is a death of one particular leader, most of the times uh, we will cast our votes uh, to their children. That means uh, here uh, different ways of political systems will also be governed by the traditions, that means the culture. And at the same time economic systems, uh, different varieties of economic system, agriculture is part and parcel of our culture. Even though it is an economic activity, it is part and parcel of our culture. Like that uh, hunting and gathering that is a part and parcel of uh, the tribals. Like that uh, different varieties of economic systems uh, are also part and parcel of our culture. And there will be exchange of goods and services not only on the basis of uh, demand and supply but also on the basis of uh, mutual needs. Based on the culture the exchange of goods and services the modes of exchange of goods and services will change. Apart from that, religion is also part and parcel of our culture. I need not to explain. And language, language is also part and parcel of our culture. In different varieties of election campaigns, you can come across different varieties of speeches used by different varieties of leaders in the local language. There can be one prime minister whenever he visits, 
a particular South Indian state. Then uh, he may start his speech uh, with the South Indian language. Why? Because uh, they want to associate themselves with the people of uh, so and so particular region. If someone offends your language, immediately will get lot of angry. Why? Because that is part and parcel of our culture. Like that, we will study different domains of our culture, marriage systems, family systems, uh, kinship, that means uh, different varieties of relationships, uh, economic systems, uh, political systems, uh, different varieties of belief systems, uh, language, like that, we will study our culture. After that, uh, now we came to, we are discussing that uh, these are the different varieties of marriage systems, these are the different varieties of political systems, economic systems, belief systems in different parts of the world. How we came to know about all these systems? It is because of uh, the research conducted by our earlier anthropologists or sociologists, whoever it may be. That's why at the time of conducting research, uh, we have to collect the data in an unbiased way. If you want to know about uh, the culture of the people or uh, the behavior of the people at so and so circumstances, say for example, consider election. What are the factors that are governing the electoral behavior at the time of election? How the people respond to different varieties of promises given by different varieties of political people? We want to know like that, if you rely only on one newspaper, you may not get proper information, sometimes biased information. Some newspapers may be in favor of one political party, some newspapers may be in favor of another political party. That's why there are chances for getting biased information. That's why to avoid the biases and to get uh, the correct information regarding the culture, that too from the point of view of the natives. Here in India, in Hindus, uh, we will wear a waste thread. It appears to be highly irrational for an outsider, but uh, there is one hidden rationality. That too, Waste thread will be used by the males only but not by the females. There is one rationality, one reason. It prevents hernia. What are the mechanisms we will discuss later. Like that for each and everything there will be one reason. For an outsider it appears to be highly irrational. But for an insider the hidden rationality will be known. That's so why if you want to really understand the culture of any group, you have to conduct research without giving any chance for the biases. And at the same time, after collecting this information, our anthropologists started proposing different varieties of theories. How culture came into existence. Later, how the culture spread to different parts of the world. And what are the factors that are responsible for the spread of this culture from one part of the world to the other part of the world? How a culture has to be interpreted? And how to understand a culture with the help of language, with the help of symbols? How the culture can influence the personality? Consider me. If I wear chudis are nothing will happen to me, but the society won't accept. That means society decides uh, this must be the behavior of a male, this must be the behavior of a female. That means the culture decides the personality of a gender, the male's behavior and the female's behavior. Like that, uh, our anthropologists proposed different varieties of theories. That's why in paper 1, section A, we will study evolution of man evolution of culture, later the culture in detail, later the research methods and finally anthropological theories. This can be simply called as socio-cultural anthropology. And in paper 1, section B, we will discuss physical anthropology.
generally we used to call we used to say that man is a social animal social animal before becoming social animal first of all he is an animal man started adopting different varieties of behaviors uh, in accordance with the restraints imposed by our body that's why if you want to really understand the culture or the behavioral pattern of the people you must understand the biological entity especially during the process of evolution the gains made by us will be handed over to the next generation through genes that's why we will study the genes how the genes of uh, the humans and the ancestors of humans uh, have responded to different varieties of environments and how we have devised uh, different varieties of uh, cultural practices in tune with the restraints imposed by our genes or body composition that's why here we will study the genes and the study of genes is called genetics and after that we will study what are the different stages in the life of a human being and uh, what are the factors that influence uh, the growth and development in human beings and how the aging process sets in and what are the different varieties of theories proposed by different uh, biologists and anthropologists to explain the process of senescence and finally the death later we will study the biological aspects of uh, population that means uh, fertility the population size will be influenced uh, by our ability to produce human beings our ability means females the ability of a female to produce live children is called as fertility what are the factors that influence fertility only biological factors or whether there are any social factors that means socio cultural factors economic factors political factors they also influence uh, our behavioral pattern with regard to the production of the children how many children have to be produced and when they are, they are to be produced like that our behavior will be decided by number of factors sexual behavior and at the same time population size will also be influenced by the death rate mortality we will study what are the factors that influence mortality and what are the different varieties of theories proposed after that we will study the application of our knowledge gained during the process of uh, the learning of uh, genetics we will use our knowledge in the designing of uh, different varieties of equipments especially defense equipment here whenever a particular good is produced that must be in tune with the body proportions say for example if i was provided with a refill can i write on the board i can but with a lot of difficulty acceptability will be decreased that's why whenever a good is produced it must be in proportion with the body measurements otherwise it may lead to rejection of the particular good rejection of the good only takes place in case of other goods but uh, if the defense uh, equipment is not produced in tune with the body measurements then uh, their efficiency at the time of war will be decreased there will be loss of uh, lives there will be loss of property there will be loss of sovereignty also that's why we will apply our knowledge in the designing of defense equipment apart from that we will uh, use our knowledge uh, for dealing with a number of uh, medical legal cases in the identification of criminals in the identification of victims in the accidental exchange of babies in the hospitals in cases of uh, divorce divorce cases where the husband seek divorce uh, on the basis of unleased extramarital relationships uh, of his wife like that in, in determining the parentage and in assessing the nutrition level like that we will apply our knowledge that is also part and parcel of our physical anthropology that's why first we will study genetics 
After that, we will study the growth and development. After that, we will study the demographic physical anthropology. After that, we will study applied physical anthropology. This is about first paper, general anthropology in which social culture and physical anthropology are there. Similarly, as far as the Indian anthropology is concerned, it can be divided into section A and section B. As far as section A is concerned, here also we will study the evolution of Indian culture, Stone Age culture, Metallic Age cultures, Indus Valley civilization, Vedic civilization, like that here we will study the history especially cultural part and after that uh, we will study some of the anthropological significant remains uh, which were obtained during the process of archaeological excavations and after that we will study the Indian society. In the Indian society first we will study the traditional Indian society. After that, uh, we will study what are the changes that have taken place in the Indian society until the present. That means we are going to study from the past to the present. That means we are going to study the history in detail. And we are going to learn uh, the root causes for the develop for the introduction of different varieties of uh, cultural practices. If you want to govern any district or if you want to become a good bureaucrat, you must know the society. Without knowing the society, it is not possible to become an administrator. That's why here we will study the Indian society, first race Indian society. What are the values that govern that govern the Trace Indian society once upon a time? Even today also they have been governing our lives. Unconsciously, we have adopted a number of values Dharma, Ardha, Kama, Moksha. We used to say, and whenever there is failure in the exam, it is because of my fate. That means a karma and a runas. We are indebted towards our parents, towards gods and goddesses, towards teachers, and towards guests number of values we have adopted unconsciously because they have become part and parcel of our culture they are governing our lives even today also that's why we will study the traditional indian philosophy or philosophical concepts and after that we will study the most important characteristic of the traditional indian society not only the traditional indian society but also the present society or contemporary society that is nothing but caste system in India, caste plays an important, very, very important role in almost all the aspects, especially at the time of elections. And at the same time, uh, at the time of uh, our competition to different varieties of jobs, because in India we have been providing reservation on the basis of caste. That's why we are going to study the caste system, how the caste system came into existence, what are the characteristics of the caste system, and what is meant by dominant caste. And uh, how in the tradition Indian society some sort of harmony was achieved among different castes. Like that uh, we are going to study different aspects of the tradition Indian society from then onwards we will study the change. The social cultural change not only in the ancient India, medieval India and modern India but also in the contemporary India, in the globalized world also we are going to study the impact of uh, the Buddhism on the Indian society, the impact of Jainism on the Indian society. After that, uh, the Islam came to India, the impact of Islam on the Indian society, the impact of Christianity on the Indian society. After that, the impact of independence and uh, the impact of globalization. These are the important stages, uh, independence, uh, globalization are the important stages, stages in the life of uh, the Indian, in the history of India. That's why here we are going to study all those things. That means uh, up to the present we will study the change. We 
will study not only the past societies but also the present societies. That means we are going to have an in-depth understanding of the present society. Whenever you have an in-depth understanding of the present society, it will be very very useful for you to write answers uh, to some of the questions uh, in general studies paper 1, social issues and for the general essay and for ethics and for the interview also even in the interview also you can give answers uh, instantaneously without any hesitation you can get uh, that type of knowledge whenever you go through this indian society here if you want to know really about the indian culture uh, first of all you have to study the villages because in urban centers you can come across uh, the impact of westernization modernization the real culture can be seen in the villages that's why here we will study the villages uh, what is the importance of uh, village studies uh, in anthropology or sociology or in the understanding of the society? In the villages, a majority of the relations are governed by agrarian relations. India is basically an agrarian country. The two, agriculture is the mainstay of occupation for the rural people. That's why we will study the agrarian relations before the advent of the Britishers, what were the agrarian relations, what are the important changes brought about by the Britishers, after independence what were the changes brought about by the independent Indian government in the form of land reforms and what is the, what are the agrarian relations, what are the changes that have taken place after globalization. Because of, because of globalization number of important changes have taken place in the, in, in the lives of the people not only in the villages but also in the urban centers. Apart from the rural people, we study the minorities, the Muslims, the Christians, the Sikhs, Buddhists, Jains, Zoroastrians. Like that, we will study these are religious minorities. What is their social status, economic status, political status? What are the measures taken by the government of India? What are the policies of the government? And what are the constitutional measures? What are the laws? enacted for the sake of production and development of uh, these communities and what are the programs, different varieties of programs uh, that are being implemented by the government of India and by different state governments. And how socio-cultural change is brought about uh, in uh, different societies, uh, that means in different regions in India, we will study different processes of socio-cultural change, sensitization, modernization, westernization and what are the agents that are responsible for the social change the impact of media, the impact of Panchayatra's institutions, like that we will study. We will study the Tracian Indian society, we will start our study from Tracian Indian society, we will continue uh, we'll continue it uh, through the history, through number of ages and finally we will study the present society also. We will concentrate uh, on all the social issues. That is why in section A, we will study the traditional Indian society. and social change and in section B we will study the most backward sections of Indian society which are nothing but uh, the tribals. The tribals have been living in a relative state of isolation, they have shyness of contact and uh, they are uh, majority of the tribal people are illiterate people when compared with the mainstream society and they are backward in many other aspects. They are plagued with the poverty, unemployment, malnutrition, illiteracy, like there are different varieties of problems. That is why that too, they do not have awareness regarding the availability of different varieties of provisions for the sake of production and development of their own communities. Even though we have been implementing different varieties of programs uh, and schemes for the sake of their development, uh, they, lack, they lack from awareness uh, regarding the availability of all these provisions on the schemes. That is why here we will study especially as far as paper 2 section B is concerned, we will follow the problem oriented approach. This approach must be utilized, must be used to not only study the anthropology but also to study the general issue general studies, especially for general essay. 
here if everything is going on in a fine manner then there is no need for the government to have administrators or bureaucrats that means uh, our role in the future is uh, to ensure smooth administration in order to ensure smooth ad administration you must know the problems and what are the causes for those problems what are the measures that are being available to deal with those problems and what are the new measures that can be taken we must know that type of concern must be there whenever you have that concern automatically you will study that particular problem in detail whenever you know the problem in detail what is the problem magnitude of the problem root causes of the problem consequences of the problem policy of the government constitutional measures of the government constitutional measures uh, legislative measures that means in the form of laws administrative measures and different varieties of ngos like that we must know what are the measures that are being taken by different agencies uh, for the sake of their development not only with respect to tribal india but also with respect to all the weaker sections of the society in case of gender studies uh, they can be females they can be children they can be old people they can be psychologically deranged people or mentally disabled people or they can be scs sts obcs like that a number of weaker sections are there for all these things whenever you are studying any particular problem whenever you have that concern automatically you will uh, you will you will carry out one research on that particular issue what is that cause magnitude causes consequences if you know the root causes of those problems if you strike at the root causes definitely we can permanently eliminate that problem that's why here uh, whatever may be syllabus uh, we will study all those problems uh, once what are the problems because of their social backwardness and uh, what are the problems uh, because of our developmental activities we started constructing number of hydroelectric projects uh, in the tribal areas for the sake of uh, improving our power generation capacity and for the sake of storing water for sub for the sake of irrigation facilities ultimately the tribal people are going to be affected it is these people who need our support that means the government support but because of development uh, these people are going to be displaced and they are going to face number of problems then what can we say whether our development is uh, inclusive development or not definitely we cannot say that our development is inclusive if our developmental pro programs are causing displacement of the tribal people and uh, causing injustice to the tribal people that's why we are going to study what are the problems uh, in the tribal people because of our developmental activities then uh, we will study what are the policies of the government policy is nothing but a statement regarding future action what are the policies of the government with regard to tribal development and what are the constitutional measures and what are the legislative measures that means in the form of laws what are the administrative measures and what are what is the role of ngos in the tribal development after that we will study the impact how all these provisions laws schemes and the contribution by ngos are responsible for changing the lives of the people especially the tribal people what are the important changes brought about by these these programs whether they have still lot of uh, discontent or not if so what are the reasons for the persistence of a discontent and how that discontent is being channelized in the form of demand for autonomy and the demand for separate states regionalistic demands it is easy to mobilize uh, the people on the basis of uh, a region religion caste now whenever a particular region is underdeveloped where the tribal people have been living then it will be easy for the tribal people to motivate uh, to, to some of the tribal leaders to motivate the tribal people on the basis of their belongingness to a particular region regionalism that's why we are going to study the regionalistic demands uh, in india whenever we are studying the regionalistic demands we are going to study indirectly the concept of nation integration why because uh, the regionalistic demands are threat to nation integration bringing all the people into a single line of thinking is called as national integration that single line of thinking can be called as mainstream society if all the people are made to follow the similar values then there will not be any conflict 
That's, then we can ensure a nation integration. That's why we are going to study the threats to nation integration. And finally, what are the measures that can be taken for dealing with all these problems as an anthropologist? We will study here. Say for example, this year, many people generally ask that, Sir, second paper, paper 2 is considered highly dynamic, contemporary based. Yes, it may be dynamic, it may be contemporary based. But here, we know what are the problems in the syllabus, they have clearly mentioned these are the tribal problems and these are the measures. If there is any related issue in the newspaper, definitely we have to go through it. Say for example, consider now in this year, the government uh, released uh, its draft forest policy. In the year 1988, one forest policy was released. Almost after 30 years, the government of India again wanted to announce another new forest policy. Now, we have to incorporate it under our syllabus because that is also related in, in our syllabus forest policies are clearly mentioned. That is newly introduced, what, what are the provisions in the draft of the new forest policy and we have to analyze in what way it is different from the old policy, what are the positives in that policy, what are the negatives what is the potential of that policy like that we have to analyze first of all we should know what are the contemporary changes and after that we have to analyze like that uh, you need not to be afraid of these current affairs or contemporary based questions if we have really concern towards the problems of the tribal people easily you can identify The questions are not given from any remote corner, they are based on the public problems and the government approach. Anyway, we will give you orientation regarding uh, during, the, during, the process, during the course of our study, whenever we are discussing each and every topic, then uh, we will give uh, the orientation regarding uh, the approach uh, to be followed uh, with regard to a particular topic. That is not at all a problem. This is the overview of our anthropology syllabus. And many people feel that uh, the physical anthropology is difficult in anthropology, but it is a myth, just it is an imagination. Why? Because here, majority of the topics they were covered. Uh, in your uh, upper primary stage. There are, there are no new topics, all are old topics. You might have gone through all those topics in your upper primary stage. Definitely, they will be of intermediate, intermediate standard, plus one plus two standard. And after that, here and there, some enrichment will be there. Except the concept of genetics. The growth and development, demographic physical anthropology, applied physical anthropology, they are very simple. They are like CSAT, mathematics. Once if you can understand uh, without any revision, you can solve those things. In fact, this is an advantage. In other aspects, uh, you have to give proper introduction, proper connecting statements, proper conclusion and uh, very good narration. But in case of physical anthropology, it is not so. If the question is asked, what are Mendel laws? You have to write what are Mendel laws. The examiner will not have any discretion to cut the marks. And you can save a lot of time also. If your answer is correct, for 200 marks, even if you write 100 or 110 marks, 110 words, you will be getting maximum marks. You know in UPSC, even the UPSC also knows that 3 hours of time is not sufficient to write answers to all the questions. They will give questions like that only. In such circumstances, if you can uh, write more questions from physical anthropology, then definitely time will be saved. Then you can write answers uh, to all the questions. You know, learning the subject is only 50% of the task. 
and its representation in the prescribed time period in the exam is a very very crucial many people because of lack of writing practice uh, they are not able to clear the exam in the first attempt it is because of lack it is because of lack of writing practice that's why your writing practice is very 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 important they have writing practice and at the same time if we have if we can get uh, more uh, command over the physical anthropology in fact we can save some time also in the exam if we can write answers to all the questions automatically it will be in the it will, it will be the first comer in the exam it will be in the forefront uh, to complete the exam as well as possible this is the overview of the syllabus now if you go into details as far as your exam is concerned in your exam as far as anthropology is concerned there will be two papers paper 1 and paper 2 each paper carries 250 marks and in paper 1 section A will be there section B will be there previously I told you what is section A what is section B in this section some questions will be given in the section A syllabus of our subject in section A there will be four questions 1 2 3 and 4 in section B also there will be four questions but numbering will be like this 5 6 7 and 8 and in total you have to write five answers to five questions 5 into 50 250 marks but the first question in section A and the first question in section B are compulsory here in first question again you will have five sub questions each question carries 10 marks Similarly, here also. This is 50 marks and this is for 50 marks. Then after that, you have to write at least one question from this section and one question from this section. Each question carry is 50 marks. And the fifth question you have to select either from section A or from section B. If you select one question from this section, you have to write three questions from section A. If you select fifth question from this, you have to select the fifth, uh, that means you are going to write three questions from this section. That means if you select, say, for example, fifth question from this uh, section, that means uh, that's why I told you previously if you write more questions from physical anthropology, time will be saved. That means if you select the fifth question from physical anthropology, this is section B, then 150 marks will be in your hands and time will be saved and there will not be any discussion to the examiner. The same pattern will be there in second, in second paper also. This is the pattern. And here, these are called as short answer questions and uh, these are called as long answer questions. In the long answer question, uh, they can give questions in any manner, but as far as the present trend is concerned, uh, there will be three questions, 15, 15 and 20. Three questions will be there, one question will be for 15 marks, another question will be for 15 marks, another question will be for 20 marks, total 50 marks. If you want to write this question, you have to write all the three questions, there will not be any choice inside a question but it will be given full freedom one is the first question is compulsory fifth question is compulsory you have to select one question from section a and another question from section b and the fifth question has to be selected either from section a or from section b similar pattern will be there here also and uh, as far as our experience is concerned Current affairs based questions uh, will be asked most of the times in paper 2, the 2 in section B, most of the times. 
doesn't mean that current affairs questions will be asked only from tribal India. It can be asked from section A also and uh, here also from section A of paper 1. But so far in the history of civil services, uh, current affairs based questions are asked uh, only from the section B of paper 2. Uh, that too, one or two questions will have a lot of choice. Doesn't mean that current affairs are not important. Current affairs are very, very important. You must develop that attitude to go through the current affairs to integrate our knowledge with the contemporary events. Why? Because in the mains examination, you may have a choice, but not in the interview. That too, if you go through the current affairs if, and if you can integrate, that will be very, very useful for general essay, social issues, ethics and interview. That's why that is very, very important. That is useful for your life also, even in case if you are not selected in the civil services exam. And uh, as far as other questions are concerned, uh, indirect questions will be there here and there. And I can say one thing, this pattern is not guaranteed. 99% the same pattern will be there. But it is not guaranteed. Our UPSC can be better called as Unpredictable Public Service Commission. That's why sometimes uh, they can change. That's why you must go through the 100% of the syllabus. To go through the hundred percent of the syllabus automatically will be in a position to write questions to all the questions. You should not have choice, and that too with a lot of interest you have to go through because we are going to study our society. That will be very very useful for our survival in this society for understanding the behavior of the people. That's why. In anthropology, many students uh, used to get uh, very good marks. Why? Because here we are going to study ourselves. Anthropology is a subject in search of ourselves. That's why it is, uh, it is not a different subject. It is nothing but study of ourselves. That too, majority of the topics in anthropology are very, very interesting. Barring few topics, uh, and we know where the students commit mistakes and where it will be difficult for the students to remember in those areas if you can concentrate definitely you can get you can get through the exam